So let's take a look at this appendix four. This is where we get all of our thermodynamic values from. And something interesting, have you noticed that all of these values have this little degree sign after them? Well, what the heck does that mean? Let's take a look and go a little further with this because that a little degree sign is something we should pay a bit more attention to. So whenever we have a little degree sign after a delta G, delta H, S, it means under standard conditions. And we've heard of standard temperature and pressure before. But for gas laws, standard conditions can mean a couple different things. So we're just going to formally state that standard conditions for gas laws are going to be 25 degrees Celsius and one atmosphere. And what is interesting is that if we take a reaction that involves gases that can be affected by pressure, changing the conditions away from standard conditions can often affect the spontaneity of the reaction. So what I thought we'd do is we take a quick look at an, at a, at an example of a situation where our reaction involves gases and how we determine what changes we make to standard conditions affect its spontaneity. So here is a reaction. And it's asking us to predict the spontaneity. And notice that the delta G doesn't have a degree sign after it anymore right here. Because we're no longer at standard conditions. We're at 25 degrees Celsius, but we're no longer at one atmosphere. We have two gases, two reactants that are gases, where their partial pressures are way different than one atmosphere. What we're going to do is we're going to use a new equation to determine this change in spontaneity. It's going to look like this. We're going to say the new delta G is equal to the old standard delta G plus RT times LN of something that we remember called Q. This is going to tell us what changes we've made to temperature, to pressure, what these do to our spontaneity. Now let's take a look at this guy Q. When we started doing all this equilibrium stuff way back in chapter 13, we could write the equilibrium expression for a reaction like this by saying, okay, we have carbon dioxide gas plus hydrogen gas, and these are producing something called uh, methanol, which is a liquid. So if we were going to write the equilibrium expression for this, well, there's only one product and it's a liquid. And so that doesn't come into any kind of uh, part of the equation. That'll just be a 1 because it can't change its concentration. But we can include the partial pressure of the carbon, dioxide, uh, carbon monoxide gas times the partial pressure of the hydrogen gas. And then we'll have to pay attention to coefficients. And there's a little 2 next to this, so we'll put a 2 there. So we could find the Q by using the same equilibrium expression and just using their initial partial pressures. So the partial pressure of carbon dioxide times the partial pressure of hydrogen gas has a little 2 after it. So let's plug those in. It says here our partial pressure of carbon dioxide gas is 5 and hydrogen gas is 3. So let's throw those into this part right here and see what we get. That's a 1. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide gas is 5. We're not going to worry about the units. Partial pressure of hydrogen is 3. We're going to square that. And so, busting out our calculator, I'm just going to take out my handy online one right here. And we're going to say, okay, we'll take 1 divided by the product of 5 times 3 squared. And if you wanted to, you could just do that and then invert it, but we'll get the same answer this way. You get a bunch of twos. So here is our position for Q. A bunch of twos, 0 0.022. All right, there's no units. Let's plug that into this equation, and let's also include our original delta G and our temperature and our value for R. So before we go down to plugging into this stuff, we should get our original delta G under standard conditions. So I went into table appendix four 
and I'm looking up all the values for these guys. Carbon uh, monoxide has a delta G under standard conditions of negative 137. This is kilojoules per mole, and ethanol is negative 166 kilojoules per mole. So the original delta G under standard conditions is negative 29 kilojoules per mole. So it's negative. It's already a spontaneous reaction. What we want to know, not 99, what we want to know is if we start messing with the temperature and the pressure, or Q, the equilibrium position, does that change our spontaneity? So let's plug some stuff in. We know the temperature is 25 degrees Celsius. We calculated Q. That's down here. We'll get down to this in a little bit. And what about this guy R? Do we remember R? 8.314 joules over Kelvin moles. So we have everything that we need. Let's plug this stuff in. I'll rewrite this equation. Delta G under the new conditions is equal to delta G under standard conditions plus RT times the natural log of Q. We just found the original delta G. We said it was negative 29 kilojoules per mole. But to get it to jibe with the units for R, we'll put it in joules. Negative 29,000 joules per mole. R, we said, was 8.314 joules over Kelvin mole. Temperature is 25 degrees Celsius, but we're going to put that into Kelvins. And then we're going to multiply that by the natural log of Q, which we already found is 0 0.022. All right, so let's do natural log of Q first and then multiply uh, all this stuff together. So we'll take natural log of Q and then we'll multiply all this together. So here we have, let's take natural log of our Q, 0 0.022. Now we'll multiply that times our value for R, 8.314, times our temperature, 298 Kelvins, negative 9,456.18. Let's make sure that our units all cancel. So we have Kelvins canceling Kelvins. There's no units here. And we're adding all these together. So when we take negative 29,000, and I'm simply going to add the answer from this calculation, plus our answer, we get negative 38,456. Did that make our reaction more or less spontaneous? negative 38,456 joules per mole. Our conditions made the reaction more spontaneous because spontaneous because we made our value 4G more negative. All right, so that's all you got to do. Make sure you have table appendix 4 so you can look up your original delta G's if you have to. And don't forget to Write your equilibrium expression to find Q. All right. See you guys later.